Now at 10, thousands of people fill Camp Randall for UW's spring commencement. And a live look outside tonight, Dave Caulfield will have your Mother's Day forecast. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 10. Thousands of students and their families are celebrating the completion of years of schooling tonight. More than 7,000 UW-Madison bachelors, masters, and law students graduated today at Camp Randall. It's more than 43,000 people cheered them on. One of the highlights of today's ceremony was hearing former Wisconsin football star and current defensive end for the Houston Texans, J.J. Watt, deliver the commencement address. And dream big, work hard was my motto because I truly believed that you should have as big of dreams as you want in this world. Never let anybody tell you you can't accomplish those dreams. Last night, nearly 1,000 doctoral, masters of fine arts, and medical professional degree students had a ceremony at the Cole Center. During that graduation, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Steve Miller was presented with an honorary degree. While many were celebrated by their families, some were celebrating with them. Adam Duxter tells us about two very special graduates who have more in common than just their diplomas. For thousands of UW-Madison students, the day has finally come. Nervous and anxious. To mark the end of their college careers with graduation. And while parents in the stands at Camp Randall searched to find their loved ones on the field below, Shelby Bransma knew exactly where her daughter Stephanie was. I'm excited for both <laughs> of us, but at the same time, it's been important to me to not steal her thunder because this is a big day for her. Because she was on the field with her. Bransma made the choice to come back for her master's in social work during her son's graduation from UW in 2015. Katie Couric was the speaker and talked about following your passions and your dreams. And um, I made the decision sitting in Camp Randall that I was going to school. Stephanie starting her undergraduate degree in the same field at the same time. Most of my experience has been, wow, you're crazy for going into social work. And then me responding, well, my mom's a social worker, so I know what I'm getting myself into. Getting some help along the way. And I would like to point out that she's the better student. <laughs> And while graduation is normally a time for parents to be proud of their kids, for the Bransmas, it was the other way around. You really went out on a limb and you dared to come back to school, put yourself in an uncomfortable position when you're, you know, an older student. And I was just really proud of you for trying. Stephanie says she's been inspired by her mom to pursue her master's degree as well. Several cameras in Dane County captured video of a meteor late last night. Pretty cool. This is video from UW-Madison's Space Science and Engineering Center's camera. Middleton police say they saw it fly overhead around 1145 last night. Let's turn it over to Dave Caulfield with your first alert forecast. It must have been a pretty clear night for us to see that. Yeah, and we got the clouds to come in just in time for a lot of the festivities today. So the clouds were pretty tough until we got to the late afternoon and evening when we saw the sunshine once again. Mostly clear skies right now in Madison, the WIC TV sky cam. So a little bit chilly out there at 45 degrees. We'll call it on the cool side right now. It does get a little bit chillier as we get into tonight. South southeast wind at eight miles per hour, making it feel like 41 degrees. You can see those shades of blue a little bit closer to the lake shore. So some cooler temperatures to our east 45 in Madison, still at 48 in Prairie du Chien and 43 in Monroe. That's about five to 10 degrees cooler compared to this time on Friday, especially compared uh, or for our friends in southwestern Wisconsin, a frost advisory just issued by the National Weather Service for spots north and east of Madison. Temperatures dipping into the upper 30s overnight in Madison and for spots to the north, we could get a little bit closer to that freezing mark. So if we do have sensitive plants, maybe we're thinking about doing some planting with mom tomorrow. Just make sure to bring those inside for the time being because these temperatures are going to get rather chilly, dipping into the upper 30s overnight. We'll talk about the forecast for Mother's Day and if we'll avoid the raindrops in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. Thank you, Dave. The Crawford County Sheriff says everyone can return to normal activities after a brief ammonia leak tonight. Deputies say Highway 61 from Marietta Valley Road to Basketball Bridge has reopened after hazmat contained the spill. The sheriff had asked anyone living near the area to close all windows and vents as well as shut off heating and air conditioning units. 
A 37-year-old man punched a woman after a crash in a Home Depot parking lot Friday morning. The Madison Police Department says the man was driving in the lot on Verona Road when another car crashed into him. He continued driving in the parking lot until an uninvolved witness flagged him down. The man then exited his car and punched the woman several times. Police say she was able to restrain the man until police arrived. Officers found marijuana on the man. He was arrested on suspicion of battery and casual possession of marijuana. Madison police say there's been a 28% increase in overdoses in the city in the month of April, but a decrease overall. There were 23 overdoses reported last month, 11 of them coming in just the last five days of April. Last year, there were just 18 overdoses in the month of April. So far this year, Madison has seen 63 reported overdoses. That is a 20% decrease from this time last year. We have more details on the data released on our website, channel3000.com. A Janesville mom is in the Rock County Jail tonight, arrested for allegedly drinking while driving with her kids in the car. 42-year-old Jessica Nottenstad faces felony OWI charges. Sheriff's deputies say around 5 o'clock last night, they responded to the 240 block of Russell Avenue on the outskirts of Janesville. Nonstad was being confronted by family members after she supposedly picked up her kids from school drunk. Both of the kids were under the age of 16. This is the third time she's faced OWI charges. In news around the state, a teenager killed in Kenosha is being remembered by her family and friends as a bubbly and loving person. 16-year-old Kaylee Juga and her mom, Stephanie, were allegedly shot Thursday afternoon by Kaylee's ex-boyfriend. Stephanie is recovering at a hospital. Last night, people gathered at a park to pray for Stephanie and to remember Kaylee. She was such a loving person. Kaylee loved cheer. She loved being with her friends. She was just a bubbly person. She made everything a great time. Kaylee's ex-boyfriend, 15-year-old Martise Fuller, was arrested and is awaiting charges. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation is planning to use aerial enforcement Monday in Jefferson County. The state patrol will use aircrafts and ground-based officers to enforce the speed limit and other traffic laws along I-94. Last year, there were nearly 20,000 speed-related crashes that caused nearly 8,000 injuries and 173 deaths in the state. Officials say that's more than the number of people injured or killed in alcohol-related crashes. Officials say if the weather is not good enough for flying, they will still use ground units for that enforcement. In developing news around the world tonight, China says it will hold another round of trade talks in Beijing after negotiations this week failed to result in a deal. China so far is taking a wait-and-see approach. On Friday, the U.S. increased tariffs to 25 percent from 10 percent for some $200 billion worth of Chinese goods. Beijing has threatened countermeasures, but the day after negotiations ended with no deal, China still had yet to retaliate. It's going to make U.S. firms less competitive, and we're going to see further retaliation. President Trump on Friday also ordered officials to prepare to impose tariffs on more than $300 billion worth of Chinese goods, which covers just about everything China exports to the U.S. Venezuela's opposition leader Juan Guaido is seeking to open relations with the U.S. military. With inflation and more than a million percent money is so worthless, it's unaffordable for many to even buy half a dozen eggs. Children are starving to death. Venezuela's child mortality rate has jumped 140 percent compared to 2008. But amid the despair, there are helpers. A program called Alimenta la Solidaridad, or Feed the Solidarity, was created by Harvard-educated Venezuelan Roberto Patino. More than 300,000 children are in risk of dying because of the hunger crisis here in Venezuela. Senor says they feed 10,000 children a day. Tensions between the U.S. and Iran are tightening. Iran's hardline revolutionary guards have made it clear that they have no interest in talking with the U.S. about giving up their nuclear program. Patriot air defense missiles, an amphibious assault ship, a nuclear-powered submarine, along with fresh supplies of precision-guided weapons are all on their way. In response to intelligence reports, Iran is preparing to attack American troops or diplomats. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has warned any attacks, quote, will be answered with a swift and decisive U.S. response. Iranians make the mistake of launching an attack in the Persian Gulf on an American warship. The administration probably won't have any alternative but to retaliate. 
The aircraft carrier Lincoln must first pass Yemen, where Iranian-backed rebels have in the past fired missiles at American ships. And once it arrives at the entrance to the Persian Gulf, it will be operating under the noses of Iran's hardline Revolutionary Guard units. More local news now. After being killed in combat more than 70 years ago, a Wisconsin veteran is returning home. A service took place for World War II Marine Corps Captain Lester Shade from Holton, Wisconsin, in Marathon County today. When Shade was 27 years old, he was taken as a prisoner of war by Japan. He survived the Bataan Death March. His death was the result of an attack on a Japanese transport ship. Community members paid tribute to Shade alongside Highway 13 as his remains were being taken to the Abbotsford Cemetery. As descendants of him and of relatives, we're very proud to have be able to say that he was my uncle. Shade was survived by two brothers who have since passed, but their children attended that service today. Next on News 3 Now at 10, if you're planning to make a trip to the other side of Lake Michigan this summer, there's another way to get there other than the road. We'll explain. Welcome back. Thousands of fans packed the Pfizer Forum Plaza to celebrate the Bucks win on Wednesday. But as Caroline Reinwald reports, some fans believe something they drank made them black out. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know how I got home. Ali Diaz remembers being in a crowd of about 2,000 people Wednesday night in the Deer District, buying a pre-mixed Moscow mule with her friend around 6.30. Then another round two hours later when they started feeling strange. So I turned to my friend and I said, hey, um, I'm seeing double. And she looked at me and she was like, yeah, me too. A couple minutes later, she's like, hey, like, I need to go to the bathroom. I really don't feel good. She goes to the bathroom and that's 
the last thing I remember. Diaz made it home and doesn't think she was ever hurt, but she's certain her drinks were drugged. When she posted about the incident in a Milwaukee women's Facebook group, two more couples responded with the same experience. Other people were commenting and saying that I had a Moscow mule. I went to that same exact tent. We only had two drinks and we were also completely blacked out. Didn't remember a single thing that happened for the remainder of the night. Diaz filed a report on the Deer District website and plans on following up with police. I was lucky enough to find my way home, but I am ultimately scared that someone didn't make it home, that someone wouldn't make it home. Bucks officials were asked if this was bad liquor or if someone put something in the drinks in the absolute tent. They just said, quote, we take all matters of safety seriously and have started an investigation. Kids in Middleton got a chance to take a plane ride for free today. It's part of the Young Eagle program. Kids ages 8 to 17 could go out to the Middleton Airport and take a free 15-minute ride in a two to four person plane. For some kids, it was their first time flying at all and they get to take off from Middleton and see all the way to Sauk City from the sky. The coordinator of the program says this is a good way to get kids excited about the aviation industry, even if they don't become pilots. We're trying to educate the young people just uh, to get them used to the idea that anybody can go and start to learn to fly. If you missed this one, Young Eagles has another event like this coming up on August 10th. A ferry from Manitowoc to Michigan is sailing again. The SS Badger set for its first voyage of the summer yesterday. The ship takes daily trips from Manitowoc across Lake Michigan to Ludington, Michigan. It can carry up to 600 passengers and 180 vehicles. It takes about four hours to get from one side of the lake to the other. You can ride the ship until October when it closes for the season. We're getting a lot of these stories about summer things starting. Dave, it's, it's given us some hope. Yeah, I actually, <laughs> now that I think about it, I remember doing uh, or being on that ferry as a kid. So that's really, really cool that it's starting up again. Hopefully the weather cooperates for journeys in the future. The weather cooperated for the most part today. We did see those clouds kind of hang tough for much of this Saturday, but temperatures still made it into the mid to upper 50s across southern Wisconsin. And the sun did come out just in time get a few hours of blue sky late this afternoon into the early evening hours. We could see that on our time lapse on the WIC TV sky cam in Madison. You can see those peaks of blue sky towards the late afternoon hours. Actually a quick shower here at the station this afternoon, but it was gone pretty quickly. So our live look in Madison, the Edgewater sky cam right now, we're actually looking at clear skies. The Almanac for today, high of 56, still running about 10 degrees below normal for this time of year. And I think we'll be in similar temperature territory as we get into tomorrow. I mentioned those clear skies. That's really allowing temperatures to tumble this evening down to 45 in Madison, 41 already in Watertown and close to 40 degrees in Sheboygan as well. 45 in Janesville and 43 in Mineral Point. Some of us have a frost advisory as we head into Mother's Day morning. More on that in just a little bit. So we did see some activity on Doppler track today, but really a lot of those showers uh, got out of here once the sun went down and we're not expecting much in the way of shower activity overnight. However, our second system I've been talking about this weekend on the way kind of still spinning through Omaha, Nebraska, now affecting portions of Minnesota and Iowa. The good news is our latest forecast models have really been spinning this just to the south and west of southern Wisconsin. So it really does look like a lot of our guidance is painting the picture of a dry Mother's Day. We'll keep a slight chance of showers in the forecast, but really I don't think they're going to affect many of us. Temperatures in the upper 50s and mostly cloudy skies on the way for tomorrow after getting through a chilly morning. By the way, Mom, happy Mother's Day for sure. And Amanda, happy Mother's Day as well. I mentioned that frost advisory. We are looking at spots north and east of Madison for temperatures to tumble into the mid 30s. So a little bit closer to the freezing mark. If you're planning on maybe getting some planting done with mom tomorrow, make sure those sensitive plants are brought inside and and uh, and 
you know, keep them inside overnight when these chilly temperatures are occurring. We should be in the mid to upper 50s by the time we get into tomorrow under mostly cloudy skies, looking like those rain showers staying just outside of southern Wisconsin. Then on Monday, plenty of sunshine comes our way. Temperatures will be in the mid 60s. The 10 day forecast showing those temperatures in the 70s by Tuesday, a chance of showers and storms on Tuesday night into Wednesday. And then we're hovering near 70 degrees into Thursday and Friday should be dry on Thursday. A stationary front could set up by the time we get into next weekend, providing us plenty of shower and thunderstorm chances. Still a little bit of uncertainty there. When I said Amanda, I meant my wife, Amanda. I was going to clear it up. <laughs> uh, not, not my lovely co-anchor, Amanda, although isn't it National Dog Mom Day today? Oh. See, I remember all these holidays. Yeah, and your dog's the, name is Benny. Benny. Yeah. How could I forget? But I think your your wife's Mother's Day is a little more important. First Mother's Day as a mom, so exciting. Happy Mother's Day, Amanda. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Thanks, Dave. It was a long day for the Brewers and Cubs. Highlights from a lengthy affair at Wrigley Field. Next in sports.
Well, the 19 times the Brewers and Cubs will face each other this season, the two teams have played four so far. The Brewers had the three to one edge, including a big seven to zero win yesterday at Wrigley Field. Game two of the series this afternoon and a little different spiel than yesterday. Pitchers duel to start, no score till the fifth inning. Aaron Perez. Getting one into the crowd off of Cole Hamels. It's one nothing Brewers. Bottom of the inning, the Cubs would answer though. It's Albert Elmore Jr. Sends that one to right field. That's an RBI double. David Bodie sprinting. Close play at the plate, but he is safe and we've got a tie ball game. Ten innings later, that's right, ten in the 15th. Wilson Contreras into the look at how many people have left by this point. Jeez, his 10th home run of the year for a solo walk off Cubs win two to one. This game took just about five hours and the two teams used a total of 15 pitchers. Luckily, tomorrow's game is a late one. 6 p.m. First pitch on Sunday night baseball for the fourth time in program history. The Wisconsin softball team earning a trip to the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament, but a trip to the championship game means getting past top ranked Michigan the Badgers. They're the five seed down five zip early in Bloomington, Indiana. Taylor Johnson at the plate launches that ball out to left center and it's gone. Wisconsin down five to one now in the fourth fourth inning to the fifth Kayla Conlin with a big hit to left center. That's a two RBI double scoring Tyra Turner and Stephanie Lombardo. But that is all the Badgers would get on the board. It was a tough game for Caitlin Menz on the mound. She started the game giving up four runs on seven hits in two innings of work. Wisconsin loses to Michigan eight to three the final. They now await their NCAA tournament fate. Brackets will be announced at eight o'clock tomorrow night. The Bucks can now chill out for a bit as the team waits to find out who their opponent will be in the Eastern Conference Finals. Now that's a good thing because they'll get a total of six days of rest before their next game. Right now, the other game of the conference semifinals between the Raptors and Sixers is tied at three games apiece. Game seven is tomorrow night in Toronto, and the winter of that winner, rather, that one will face the Bucks. But Giannis and the guys are kind of used to this. They had four days off between the regular season and then almost a week between the Pistons and Celtics series. So, what has head coach Mike Budenholzer learned about this time off? You always are never sure, you know, we should have done a little more of this or a little less of that. But I think the break between the end of the regular season and the first series, and then I, I think we were better going into, uh, you know, between the Detroit and the Boston. And hopefully you can say the same, that whether it be, you know, coaches a little smarter, a little better, or players just understanding you know, what it takes in that first game and how they need to take care of themselves and what they need to do. I think just as a whole, um, I think each time you get a chance to do something, hopefully you're better. And that's one of our mantras. And um, it's still, I think we were pretty bad in game one. Um, so maybe we should be terrible between now and game one. <laughs> Okay, please don't be terrible, really, please don't. Coach Bud's predecessor, by the way, Jason Kidd, has found a new home. The former Bucks head coach will be an assistant coach for Frank Vogel. Vogel reached a deal with the Lakers earlier today. Kidd actually interviewed for the head coaching gig as well, but he reportedly has a good relationship with LeBron James. The two of them became friends during the 2008 Beijing Olympics. And also tonight, Madison forward and now unbeaten for five games in a row. They tied at Chattanooga tonight. So... It's a draw still, but it's not losing. Not losing, <laughs> and that's where it counts. And I feel like exactly. every game we're seeing more Madison fans exactly. get really excited about their season. Yeah, so it's cool. awesome. Thanks so much. We'll be right back.
Mother's Day tomorrow. I know a lot of mothers are hoping that we're yeah. not going <laughs> to see some rain. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we're actually going to remain dry tomorrow. That's the way our forecast models have been trending, which is good news. We're off to a chilly start, though, for Mother's Day. Right now, these temperatures are already in the low to mid 40s, and we have clear skies overhead, so they're going to continue to tumble. A frost advisory actually issued north and east of Madison for Columbia, Dodge County, also into Marquette and Green, uh, Green Lake County uh, for 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. So we're starting off in the 30s, but those temperatures under mostly cloudy skies getting into the mid to upper 50s. So if we do have any plants that we were I'm planning on planting. <laughs> That's kind of a weird sentence to say. Um, <laughs> tomorrow, make sure that they are inside tonight and covered up. The 7 to 10 day forecast showing warmer temperatures ahead of us with plenty of chances for showers and storms. All right. Thanks so much and happy Mother's Day to everyone. Yeah. Have a good night. No one.